hello guys and uh, i hope you're doing great in this video tutorial we're gonna see how to design an egg incubator using the microcontroller pic 16 f 8778 and uh, basically we're going to walk through the proteus design and also check on the code on how it's written it's all of that given in the video description you simply download the file and you can extract it and uh, have it on your computer i have a bonus for you if you watch the video to the end we are going straight to the point but before then let's have a moment for the jingle you know it's actually my only moment of glory throughout the video <laughs> okay guys welcome back uh we are going to start rapidly by uh, trying to explain the role of uh, of uh, different devices right here here we have the microcontroller it's actually the brain of the system it's controlling the system and um just here to the left we have our dht22 it's a temperature and a humidity sensor as you can see we have here uh, RH and we have degrees centigrade so uh, it measures temperature and uh, also measures the rate the rate of humidity and uh, right here just above we have a crystal oscillator the crystal oscillator which is used by uh, the microcontroller in order to function properly and uh, there are two capacitors which are coupled and uh, connected to the ground right here here to the right we simply have our lcd the liquid crystal display 20 by 4 lcd and uh, below we have some push buttons we have four push buttons so this temp plus temp minus humid plus and humid minus these are actually the push the push buttons to vary or to change the reference uh, parameters so if i want to increase the reference temperature here is where I'm going to press and so on for the humidities. And uh, why did I decide to use only four push buttons? It's simply in order to make the system very easy and uh, user friendly. I didn't want to put in a menu in which the user will go to the menu and select the temperature and var before he varies and saves and so on and so forth. So this is why uh, I just decided to have some push buttons just few push buttons to simplify the system and uh, here we have um, we have our humidifier it's when the humidity is not enough the humidifier will be will be set on and uh, it's going to increase the humidity of of the system and uh, it's basically consists of uh, a transistor and uh, a relay the relay is simply acting as a power interface device and uh, we have the same thing for our fan here is the fan when the temperature is high it's so high the microcontroller is going to command the fan in order for the fan to reduce the temperature and uh, here up above we have our heater the, the circuits are just the same and uh, for the heater I didn't want to use resistance I decided to use some length but you can change it and use a heating resistance for example or you can change and use any other thing that you have same for the humidifier because I didn't uh, there's no humidifier in a uh, protein so this is what I decided to use and uh, right here you simply ask yourself why is this system what is the use of this system so for now I'm not going to answer that for now we're going to launch the simulation and uh, I'm going to explain the role of this system while we will be working and uh, we are moving to the code now this is the code in uh, micro C pro for peak it's actually the code I have written in micro C pro for peak uh, the code is not it's a little bit long uh, but it's pretty simple to understand and uh, this is simply the the LCD connections and uh, here we have some basic we have the, the, the connection of our DH2 pin DHT22 sensor and uh, the comments are there which explain all of that this is the interrupt this is the function the interrupt function and uh, the interrupt function is used for the push buttons to vary the temperature 
the reference to vary the reference temperature and uh, here we have our start signal for the communication between the microcontroller and uh, our DHT22 sensor and uh, there are many other things that are really basic and uh, they are really simple and the comments are there if you want to understand more the comments are there so you make sure that you select all the libraries you go to library manager you make sure you check all these libraries especially if you're a beginner you make sure that uh, all of these libraries are being checked because if they are not checked there are some important libraries that are used for the project and if they are not checked uh, it's going to give you some simulation errors so make sure you check all of these all of these libraries so why did i decide to use the dht22 it's simply because the dht22 has the possibility of measuring the temperature and the humidity at the same time uh, there are other temperature sensors like the lm35 but the lm35 measures only temperature but not humidity and there's also the dht11 but i decided to use dht22 simply because of the accuracy this one gives uh, measurements to one decimal place and uh, the DHT11 gives measurement to zero decimal place so it just gives whole numbers temperature whole numbers and so on so let's rapidly launch our system now to check on the functioning of the system so when I press on run and we have here the welcome uh, message EWOLF egg incubator and uh, we simply have the information displayed here so we have here the temperature which is measured by uh, the DHT22 and uh, as you can see the temperature right here is 44.7 and the humidity is 70.0 and that's exactly what we have here we have the temperature to be 44.7 and the relative humidity to be 70 Point zero percent, and uh, here is the reference temperature that uh, you can set in the system. We have presently is 62.9, is true, is too high. We have the relative humidity which is 79. So, for incubation, for egg incubation, the temperature uh, it's uh, generally in uh, the range 38 of 38 degrees, and uh, the humidity it depends on the type of eggs that we are incubating for the humidity it can be uh, generally about 70 to 80 and it also depends on the number of days so presently as you can see we are decreasing and uh, we have reduced the, 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 the reference temperature and uh, as you can see the temperature of the environment is 44.7 degree it's the temperature given by our sensor and uh, we have put the reference temperature to be 88 be 38.4 degrees celsius and what the system is doing is actually uh, cooling you can see that the fan is running that the fan is running uh, and it's trying to cool the place so that's why the fan is turning and same for the humidity presently we have the humidity to be the reference humidity to be 80.9 percent but the humidity measured in the hall or in the system is 70 percent so the humidifier is activated in order to increase the level of humidity from 70 to 80 so let's now try to change this let's say we are increasing because this is actually uh, cooling let's say we are decreasing the temperature and uh, you will notice that when we are going to reach here when we are going to reach the temperature of uh, 38 degree it's going to stop here was 38.4 so presently it's the temperature of the environment is of the of the system is 38.4 degree and uh, that is what was given that is what was regulated uh, as it was provided as the reference temperature when it's 38.4 the, the cooler or the fan is going to stop but if the temperature goes below that if it goes below that like 38.2 you see that we have here our heater which is activated and uh, actually you see these lamps are on it's actually heating the system in order for the system to be in equilibrium and uh, when it reaches 0.4 
the lamps are going to turn off and uh, that's that's just pretty uh, simple the system is very basic same for humidity we have we can uh, increase the humidity i can change this and uh, increase the humidity to um, the reference humidity value because this is the role of the humidifier as it is on the humidity is increasing what did we have here 80.9 presently as we have 80.9 the humidifier has simply gone off and uh, that is it that is it for the system bird okay so let's just stop this and uh, launch it back presently i am going to explain the role of this circuit what is the role of this circuit actually the role of this circuit is simply it helps the microcontroller to save the data before power failure or when the system is going off uh, how does that happen and why does it happen now there is one thing we have to note about microcontrollers with microcontrollers and uh, like for the peak family for example and even the as we know there are a limited number of write and, and read cycles into the ee prom the electrically erasable programmable uh, read only memory and uh, generally it's about a million a million cycle and uh, when that cycle when that number of time has been exhausted uh, the memory does not behave normally again it does not it has difficulties now in saving data or at times it will not even function anymore so we need to limit the number of saves that we make to the EE Prom and uh, that will be pretty simple when we are using a menu because when you are using a menu uh, what happens is that you can select the value and when you press on OK it simply saves one time there is another possibility also to save the information another possibility of saving the data will be uh, putting the save function in the code in such a way that we can be put, we could be putting ee premier uh, We could be putting EE prom right here in the code, inside the code, and so on, in such a way that every time we will modify the reference values and the program will uh, loop, it's going to save the value. But that is actually a problem because, as we said, there is a limited number of write and uh, read cycles. And if you do that, it means in about 16 hours of time, you will completely exhaust the number of read stroke right times into the ee prom and it actually becomes a problem so now another solution is the solution that i use is simply to save the information only when there is power failure how does that happen it happens through this capacitor that we have here if the system goes off this capacitor is going to power the circuit to power the microcontroller for some few milliseconds and during that time during that small period of time the microcontroller is going to save the data so it's actually using this pin 34 that we have connected to rb1 and uh, it's going to send so if this is on and power goes off here you are going to the microcontroller is going to be powered by this capacitor for some few milliseconds and uh, it's going to read the value of rb1 and if that value is zero it's going to save to save the data so basically uh it's pretty simple it's actually simple and uh, the role of this diode is simply to prevent our capacitor from supplying this part of the circuit when there is when there is power failure because you know the capacitor will be used to supply the microcontroller and uh, if we misuse that power the microcontroller will not have time enough to to save the values so let me let's now try to test that let's try to test that we've really uh, talk we have explained how it works let's try to test that and to do that i am going to increase this value for example to about 50 degree or something like that for the temperature and uh, i know it's an overkill i know a reference value of 50 degree is actually too high and uh, don't do that don't do that practically if not you're going to have uh, boiled eggs and uh, they will be more edible than hatchable so let's just say we have a reference of 50 50.8 50 and let's decrease the reference humidity to about 75 so what happens is that when i'm going to press this push button you will notice that for some few seconds this capacitor is going to supply our microcontroller so if i press if i press the push button 
that is it and if I allow it's going to reset and uh, you will see that when that happens we have our values 50.8 and uh, 75.0 those values are they are being kept there they are back but you will notice that if I change these values and I simply stop the system I simply stop the program I have we have here for example 53.6 if I simply stop the simulation and start it back it will not give us that value it's not going to save the value it will be the previous value that was there 50.8 you see so power is really important in order uh, to save the value when the system goes off or when the there is power failure this is the end of the video and here is the bonus for you that stay to the end and the bonus is actually a joke here is the joke the day i knew i had grown big is the day i was moving on the road and i saw an empty can on the ground and passed without kicking it so when that happened i was very happy and in order to celebrate my growth i went back and kicked the can with all my power so thank you very much for watching and uh, if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and if you didn't like the video go ahead and uh, press the dislike button meet you for our next video tutorial